autocorrect, autocomplete voice assistants. What's common in these seemingly normal and super simple everyday activities? Well, they're all made available by natural language processing, which is a branch of artificial intelligence that gives machines the ability to read and comprehend information just like us humans do. Hey, my name is Mo Chen and I work as a data and analytics analyst within the financial services industry. In today's video, I'll turn the cutting-edge technology and complex topic of natural language processing into small and simple concepts that will be very easy to understand. In the first part of the video, I'll go through the theory around natural language processing, how and why it's being used, and what the most common steps are. Then, in the rest of the video, I'll show you how you can do some natural language processing of your own in Python using the NLTK library. Of course, if you don't want to attempt the exercise, that's absolutely fine, as even if you just stick around for the theory part, you'll have a great understanding of what natural language processing is. But if you do stick around till the end of the video, you'll be able to easily do some natural language processing of your own on any text that you wish. So without further ado, let's get started. Some estimates say that unstructured data makes up about 80% of the data that we produce and consume, leaving only 20% for traditional structured data. The majority of this unstructured data is in text form as we generate data when we speak, when we send messages to each other, when we tweet or post anywhere on social media. The vast amounts of text data that we generate is useful for understanding human behavior and customer habits, which is why data analysts, data scientists, and machine learning experts spend a lot of time analyzing this data. The more text data that we create, the higher the demand for automated language solutions and the more and more valuable natural language processing skills will become. When you have a conversation with a chatbot, interact with your smart assistants and voice assistants like Alexa, Siri, or Google Assistant, quickly translate something using Google Translate, or use autocomplete or autocorrect to send messages to your friends, the technology of NLP is what makes all of this seamless, even ordinary. Machines are already talking and responding to us, and NLP is what makes them so articulate, so human-like, so intelligent. NLP combines linguistics, data science, and artificial intelligence to give machines the ability to create models that can comprehend and break down and separate details from text and speech, just like us humans do. It is a branch of artificial intelligence that can be used to decipher language structures. So now that we have a good high-level understanding of what natural language processing is, let's jump into the NLP steps, starting out with segmentation. As part of segmentation, we break down the text into individual sentences. We can do so by segmenting along the document's punctuation, like full stops. Next, we'll break these sentences down into individual words, so we can explain each word separately to our algorithm. This step is called tokenization, and each word is a token. Next, we will remove the stop words, words that are not essential, words that don't add much meaning to our statement, words like you, of, and, to, or it. We remove stop words to simplify our text. Next up, we'll explain the basic form of the words to our machine by normalizing the words into their base or root forms. This process is called stemming, We'll cut off the beginning or the end of the words, taking into consideration prefixes or suffixes to get the so-called stems of the words only. We can also group together different inflected forms of words through lemmatization. This is similar to stemming as we map several words into one common root, but lemmatization considers the context and maps the word to its meaningful base form, which is called lemma. For example, stemming the word studies would give you study with an I, but lemmatizing the word studies would give you study with a Y. Or a lemmatizer should map computers into computer, while stemming the same word would result in the compute output. Lemmatization and stemming are the foundation of derived words, and the only difference between lemma and stem is that lemma is an actual word, whereas stem may not be an actual word. And thanks to Coursera, 
more specifically, Coursera's Google Advanced Data Analytics and Google Business Intelligence Professional Certificates for sponsoring this video. Building upon the skills taught in the popular entry-level Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate, these two new advanced-level certificates help learners continue to develop in-demand skills. With Coursera's Google Advanced Data Analytics Professional Certificate, you can learn skills like statistical analysis, Python, regression models, and machine learning. With Coursera's Google Business Intelligence Professional Certificate, you can learn skills like data modeling, data visualization, dashboarding, and reporting. All of these certificates are taught by Google instructors and take about two to six months to complete. So, if you're interested, enroll now and get started using the links in the description below. Next, we'll categorize words in correspondence with a particular part of speech, depending on the definition of the word and its context. We'll explain the concepts of noun, verbs, adjectives, and other parts of speech to our algorithm by adding tags to the words. These grammatical type of words are referred to as part of speech tags, and words can have more than one part of speech tag based on the context in which they're used. Say, for example, when you book a flight, book is a verb, but when you read a book, book is a noun. Or when you Google something, Google is a verb, but when you search something on Google, Google is a noun. The next step will involve detecting and categorizing important information known as named entities through named entity recognition. We'll introduce our machine to pop culture references like names, locations, companies, products, or even themes or topics. The main purpose of named entity recognition is to quickly categorize and extract the most important pieces of information without the need of time-consuming human analysis. As you can see, most techniques used in NLP are relatively simple grammar techniques that we have been taught in school. So how about we try and teach our machine some of these techniques using some hands-on exercises? I'll be coding along in a Jupyter Notebook, and the link to the code is in the description below if you want to check it out. Okay, so the text I chose is just a couple sentences from a random article around the King's coronation, which happened recently within the UK. And like always, I won't type out the code, but I will explain in detail what's happening within the code so you get a better understanding of what's going on. So first of all, let's start out with segmentation. And to do this, first of all, we will import the NLTK library, download the necessary package, and then from nltk.tokenize, I will import sent tokenize, and I will run this code. Now, you can run the code within a Jupyter Notebook by the shortcut Shift-Enter, which will run the code and move you onto the next cell, or you can use the shortcut Control-Enter, which will run the code and keep you in the same cell, or you can just hit the Run at the top, and I will do so. So this is running now, and you can see that it was successful. So you see that my code ran successfully. So let's now split the text into sentences using sent tokenize. So I'll run this code here. And now you can see that we get a list of elements, and each element corresponds to an individual sentence. So we have separated the text along the punctuation along the full stops. So next up, I'll just show you that you can pick out separate elements within this list. So say, for example, I'll pick the first element, and that would give me the first sentence, obviously, and then I can pick index position 1, which would be the second element, or I can pick index position 2, which would be the third sentence within our list, and this is going to be the sentence that I will use for the purposes of this exercise. So next up, just a little thing that I like to do is just to remove the punctuations using the regular expressions library. So import re just imports the regular expressions library. And then this bit of code here will just remove any punctuation. In this case, obviously, we only have the full stop at the end. But if you had colons, semicolons, exclamation marks, or question marks, it would also remove that. So let me just go up and run this code now. And now you can see, if you look into here, that there is no dot after the Buckingham Palace. So next up, let's move on to tokenization. And from nltk.tokenize, I will import word tokenize. So I'll just run this code 
here and let me do that. And then after that, I will use word tokenize and I'll pass in the text that we have so far. And let me just run this. And now you can see that we have a list with each individual element corresponding to a separate word. So next up, we will remove the stop words. So let me just do that. And to do this, I will download the necessary package. And then from nltk.corpus, I will import stop words. So I'll run this code first here. And then I will use a combination of list comprehension and stop words, specifying the language, which is obviously English. And this is how I will remove the stop words. So let me just do that. And now you can see that if you look at this sentence here, or these words here, and these words here, you can see that was was removed, also him was removed before, a, back, and to. So the stop words were removed from the list of elements. So here's a bit of code right here that you can use to look at the stop words in any language. So let me just choose English first. Let me run the code. And you can see that these are the stop words in English. But of course, like I said, in any language. So you can see it in French or you can see the stop words in German or say, for example, in Spanish. All of them work. All right, next up, stemming and lemmatization. So to do this, again, I will download the necessary packages. Let me just run that. And after I've downloaded the necessary packages, first of all, let's do some stemming. So from nltk.stem.porter, I will import porter stemmer. And then I will use a combination of a list comprehension and porter stemmer to do some stemming. So let me run this code here. And you can see that now these are the stems of the words. So if I look at alongside, it no longer has the E at the end. Parade no longer has the E at the end. And palace no longer has the E at the end of the word. Next up, let's do some lemmatization. So to do this, I will import wordnet lemmatizer from nltk.stem.wordnet. And then I will use a list comprehension combined with the wordnet lemmatizer to get the lemmas. So let me run this code here. And you can see that now I have the lemmas of the words. And you can see that not much has actually changed. Actually, I'm pretty sure nothing has actually changed compared to the original words, which might happen. So moving on to do a better representation and demonstration of the difference between stemming and lemmatization, I have these words right here. And we will stem and lemmatize each and every one of the words within this list. So first of all, we're going to get the stems of the words. And then after that, we will get the lemmas of the words. So we will stem and then we will lemmatize. So let me just run this code right here. And now if you look at the output here, so you can see that the stem of weight is weight and the lemma of weight is also weight. But if you look at weighting, you see the stem is weight and the lemma is weighting. And then if you look at studies, the stem is study with an I, but the lemma is study with a Y. Or if you look at studying, the stem is study again with an I, but the lemma is studying. And then if you look at computers, you can see that the stem is compute with no E at the end. And then the lemma is computer in singular form. Okay, so moving on, part of speech tagging. Again, I will download the necessary packages. So let me do that first. And then after that, from NLTK, I will import POS tag. Let me run that bit of code here. And then I will just use this part of speech tag to get the tags for each of the words. So let me run this code right now. And you can see that we get these tags here, NNP, NNP, BBD, RB. And in the below code right here, I just provided the mapping for each of these abbreviations. So if I pick NNP, for example, I can look in the list below right here. And you can see that NNP is a proper and plural noun. But if I go up here and I pick VBD, for example, you can see down here that VBD is a verb. All right, so now that we have done this, let's do some simple named entity recognition. From NLTK, I will import NE chunk. And then I will download the necessary package again as well. Let me run the code. And after that, I will use this bit of code here to create a named entity recognition tree. So let me run this code. And you can see here that Queen Camilla was identified as a person. 
And then the next one we have within here is Buckingham Palace, actually, or Buckingham is a person, which is obviously wrong. There are obviously better, more enhanced ways to do named entity recognition. But the purposes for this exercise, I think at its core, you know what it does and this will do. So next up, I passed in actually the whole text into this uh, named entity recognition tree. So this is everything that we started out right at the beginning with. So let me just run this code now here and let's see if we can identify more things now. So if you look into this, we have organization right here next to UK. Charles is a person. Yep, that is correct. And then we have organization against uh, Westminster. And then we have person against Queen Camilla, which is correct. And then we have person against uh, Buckingham, which is obviously, again, incorrect. OK, next up, I created a sentence just to demonstrate how named entity recognition can work, maybe in a better way. So Twitter CEO Elon Musk arrived at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. So let me just run this sentence right here. And then you can see that Twitter, again, is wrongly identified as a person. But uh, organization CEO, that looks about correct to me. Staples Center, yep, a facility. And then Los Angeles is GPE, which is a geopolitical entity, which is correct. And then California, again, is a geopolitical entity, which is correct. But say, for example, if instead of saying Twitter, I say Twitter Inc., I have a feeling it will recognize it as an organization. So let me just run this code right here. And there we go. So it recognized Inc. as an organization. And this is basically how named entity recognition works. Again, I must emphasize that this is a super simple example and there are much better ways and much more enhanced ways to do this. OK, so that's the end of the video. If you like this one, make sure to check out some of my other videos right here. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.